Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and as you can see on our map right here, we are currently in a pattern kind of dominated by a high pressure system. But as we go throughout today, going into tomorrow and the next day, eventually we're going to see a little low pressure system form up here. That is going to have some severe weather implications for the Ohio Valley. We're going to be talking about that today in this video. And then after that, we are going to have a, yet another potential pattern change coming after this low pressure system moves out. This high pressure sy system starts to skew off to the east and then we start to see a little bit more of a low pressure regimen starting to build back in to the western portion of the united states and then once you start to get into this orientation if our pattern really flips like this then we are going to see an increase of severe weather predominantly over in the plains and into the ozarks and maybe even into the southeast so in today's video we're going to be talking about just how legitimate this signal is given the fact that it's pretty far out there a lot of things are going to be able to change but there might be some agreement in our models early on and we're going to be talking about that and then also obviously we're going to be talking about our next couple of days here for some possibilities of thunderstorms severe weather and maybe also even a tornado and damaging wind threat going into the day after tomorrow before we get started though i do want to ask you guys to consider hitting that like button and subscribing if you do end up enjoying this forecast but enough about all of that let's go ahead and hop right into it okay starting all the way back here again this is our gefs ensemble so again this is a model average it basically takes a bunch of different models smushes them all together and you get an average or an ensemble typically what we use right before the severe weather starts to happen like you know maybe a day before or two days before we use higher resolution models that are deterministic meaning those are just one model run in order to get kind of an average of what is possible we start to look at especially in the long range these averages to kind of see what is going to be possible so this is the gefs and i'm pushing this forward and you can see that we do have a high pressure system kind of dominating out over here in the western united states and a low pressure system dominating over here in the eastern portion of the united states and this pretty much means it's going to be cooler over here maybe a little bit stormy and then over here you know it's typically going to be drier that air is going to be suppressed to the surface not really allowed to rise into thunderstorms and it should be a lot warmer over here in the west coast and that's exactly what we are seeing and this is the current pattern that we've been in for a couple of days now but eventually as we move into the future we're going to start to see that high pressure system start to collapse a little bit start to get a lot weaker which is going to allow for some low pressure systems to kind of sneak in to from canada into the united states and our first one is going to be this one over here into the northern plains that's going to bring a little shot of severe weather tomorrow and then some thunderstorms going into tomorrow night and then as we move into uh, the later portions of this forecast you can see this low pressure system gets a lot stronger as it moves off to the east this is going to bring up our first kind of more widespread severe weather system coming up in the near future and that again is going to be over there uh, into parts of ohio pennsylvania going into west virginia and and Kentucky as well. It's going to be a two out of five for severe weather. We don't have our tornado risk or damaging wind risk or our hail risk from the SPC, but we will go look at this in the HRRR in just a little bit. But basically, if you live in Columbus, Wheeling, Pittsburgh, Morgantown, Huntington, Maysville, Cincinnati, and Dayton, you're going to have an elevated chance for severe weather, and you can't even rule out some chances uh, for tornadoes. So here we are in the 500 millibar area. And as we move throughout the day and tomorrow, you can see our flow is mainly coming out of the north. Uh, down into the southeast and eventually as i push this forward you can see that eventually that flow starts to shift a little bit more uh, from the west to the east that's going to be setting up the stage for another trough that's going to be coming into the united states and impacting the ohio valley now as we come over to the nam model you can see that we can push this just a little bit further forward and then look at that just entering into the midwest and to the ohio valley we have a little bit of an elevated area of some stronger winds aloft and you can see our winds over here near iowa and illinois are kind of moving from here all the way up in this direction and then further to the south they're moving more from west directly to the east meaning this area right here is going to have a little bit of forcing and that's going to allow for some of storms to fire in this region so coming down to our lower level winds at around this time and kind of pushing this forward uh, you can see that as we move throughout the day of the 14th which is when these storms are going to be possible you can see that there is going to be some lower level shear in this area as well one of the things that i am noticing is you know we have all these winds kind of moving you know from the west to the east and then a little bit more out of the south up to the north over here into parts of indiana and ohio 
given the fact that a lot of these areas are going to be kind of perpendicular to each other from the 500 millibars down to the 850 millibars, we're probably talking about more of a damaging wind risk. But as you can see, there is some lower level shear there, so that will be able to cause a little bit of spin in this area. So you're not going to have to necessarily completely rule out the chances uh, for tornadoes. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. I think it's going to be on the lower side of things. I don't think we're going to be talking about, you know, much elevated chances for some strong tornadoes. But, you know, you definitely got to keep an eye out there uh, for the chances for some damaging winds and maybe, you know, a tornado or two uh, out of this storm. You can see as we go into about 7 p.m. on the 14th here, those winds are getting a little bit stronger over here into Kentucky and then parts of Ohio and West Virginia. So this is probably going to be where we have our most elevated tornado race, which is going to be right here into this pocket if we have enough instability. So let's go check that out. So instability or storm food is what we look for in order to see the potential for, you know, mature storms and tornadoes. Now, we don't really have a lot of instability, as you can see, you know, we're sitting around that 500 joules per kilogram, barely getting up to there. So instability is definitely going to be on the lower end of things. But given the fact that we could see potentially anywhere from 40 to 50 knots of shear, even in a low cape environment, that can still be enough to cause a little bit of spin. That's why I'm not calling for like a bunch of tornadoes or any strong tornadoes because their instability is really weak. You know, if we had a lot more instability, it'd be a little bit more concerning. But as of right now, I'm thinking somewhere around a 2% chance. Maybe um, if we get a little bit more agreement on some more instability, we might end up with a 5% chance uh, for tornadoes. But as of right now, there's still some details to work out, especially given uh, how much instability could be available uh, for this storm. Just not a whole lot out there. What's mainly going to be our highest chance is because we have those stronger lower level winds, any kind of a storm that kind of fires some organized convection and then drops a lot of rain that can sometimes bring down those lower level winds and you know we're talking about 40 to 50 knots so you know that's about 55 to 60 mile per hour winds near the surface meaning that we could have some severe thunderstorms happening uh in this area oh unfortunately we're not really in the range of our higher resolution models just yet but you can kind of get the picture of where thunderstorms are going to be possible here uh even with the lower resolutions here with our nam 12k you can see that over here into ohio uh, parts of West Virginia going into Pennsylvania as well. It's kind of going to be that main corridor where we're going to be expecting storms. It might even start over there into northern Indiana going into Ohio as well. It's not going to have red on it just because this is just not going to be a very higher resolution models. But, you know, it does kind of give you an indication. Wherever you see these blues is where those storms are going to be possible. And most likely starting around 1 p.m., we'll get a line of damaging winds with the potential for a couple of storms out there to produce some damaging winds as they move throughout Ohio going into West Virginia and Pennsylvania before they end up dying off as they move off to the north and east. Now coming back up to our 500 millibar height anomalies and looking at our lower and higher pressures, that isn't the only thing that we're kind of keeping our eye on. There's a little bit of a signal popping up on both of our ensembles for the return for of severe weather as we move past the 18th of April, potentially all the way into May as well. So let's kind of break down why that is. So typically when we look that far out into the range, things are inaccurate. But every now and then you get kind of a lineup here in our, our ensembles. And, you know, we're not going to be able to tell you if there's going to be tons of tornadoes or really big hail, you know, or lots of damaging winds. We're not going to be able to tell you the timing of those storms exactly at this point. But, you know, it's, it is worth kind of bringing up uh, what is possible here. So as I push this forward, you can see that that low pressure system up there in the northeastern United States will definitely cool things down before another little bit of high pressure works in behind that. That's going to warm up the southeast and then also potentially the northeast as well. And then as we move into about the 18th here, you can see that we are starting to see some low pressure build back over into this region. And typically when you have the blues over here and the reds on the East Coast, that means storms can kind of ride up in between that and cause some severe weather. So we're going to be watching out over here for the plains going into parts of Louisiana in the Ozarks, the Midwest, going into the Ohio Valley, and potentially even over there into the Great Lakes as well, depending on how the storm sets up and where our instability is. But that's definitely an area to watch for the end uh, of April. Um, and there is a little bit of support for this. Let's go over to the Euro model and check out its solution. So here we are pushing that forward. You see it got the high pressure, low pressure system over there. There's our storm for the Ohio Valley the day after tomorrow for the 14th. And then eventually that high pressure system kind of collapses a little bit, moves off to the east, brings some warmer temperature, maybe a little bit 
stronger of a high pressure system here on the EPS. But as we move into the 18th, again, you can see that there is some decent agreement. Let's go back and forth, back, forth, back, forth. You can see that the Euro Ensemble and the GEFS Ensemble have very similar solutions. So even though that we are out about six days into our forecast, some confidence is definitely building that we're going to be in this kind of weather pattern. And that will set up and bring potential severe weather all the way up into this region. Let's push this out further even more and continue to keep an eye on this. Yeah, you see that that low pressure system in these high pressure systems kind of hang out in the same area. They move off to the east a little bit as we move into the 20th. This is probably going to be, you know, bringing some potential for severe weather into those same areas. And then as I continue to push this forward, you can see that that kind of regimen sticks around again, another low pressure system over there, high pressure system now up there in the northeast, but still that could bring some severe weather into the Great Plains in the southern plains as well. So things are setting up for the potential here for some severe weather. Can't really break down too many details just yet. Well, let's go over to the GEFS and kind of show you a see if there's any uh, agreement on that uh, continuation. And yeah, there is. So that first little round of severe weather will come through. And then by the time we move into about the 23rd here in the GFS, you can see that we are still in a pattern that's going to be favorable uh, for severe weather here. So that's kind of my thoughts going into the end of April here is that there is agreement for severe weather. Now, again, we can't tell you any exact details just yet. It's definitely not time to freak out. I just wanted to come on here and give you guys a reality check because a lot of people are going to start talking about this. If you haven't already heard about it, just to kind of get you in the know that, you know, yes, so there is definitely a signal here for some increased severe weather, but we just don't know if it's going to be bad or if it's just going to be run in the mill kind of low end severe weather events. Those details will become more clear as we come closer to this event actually getting started, which will most likely be in the next three or four days. Now, in terms of temperatures out there, it's going to be hot today folks we're talking about 80s going all the way up into the 70s up there into north and south dakota that is honestly a little bit ridiculous i know it's april we we're supposed to be starting to get into those spring temperatures but it's going to be warmer in parts of canada than it is in northern alabama and then eventually as we continue to push this forward into the 12th you can see that it's going to be cooler during the night you know around 30s to 40s across the entire united states unless you live in texas and parts of florida and then as i continue to push this forward you can see it gets uh just as hot the next day and again hotter in Canada than it is going to be over here into the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley and the Northeast with 90s potentially getting all the way up into Nebraska. So it's definitely going to be getting hotter out there and it's going to feel a little bit more like summer than it does spring here in the Southern Plains going up into the Central Plains and also over here in Arizona where some of these areas are approaching 100 degrees again already. As I continue to push this forward, that cooling down because of that low pressure system is going to continue to happen up there into the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. We're going to get a little bit hotter though as this high pressure system starts to break down a little bit and move just a tad bit to the east over here now pulling those 80s and 90s into parts of Missouri going into Arkansas Louisiana over there into Oklahoma could start to see some 90s mid 90s all the way up into potentially even Kansas as well on the Kansas and Oklahoma border and then continuing to push this through into when that storm comes through you can see that that brings a lot more cooler temperatures down behind it so a little bit of relief there in the plains also a little bit of relief over here into the Ozarks as well while the southeast really starts to heat up we're talking about 70s and potentially some 80s as we move into the 14th here and then eventually as I continue to push this forward you can see those temperatures actually pulled down quite a bit uh, as we move into the 15th in the morning. So definitely looking like it's going to be hotter out there for some folks, cooler out there for some folks, and then it's going to kind of just cool down for all folks for maybe a day or so, and then it's going to reheat back up as we move into that next pattern that is going to be bringing more moisture and heat out from the Gulf of Mexico over the majority of the portion of the eastern United States. But I do appreciate you guys tuning in. I know I'm not posting a lot recently. It's mainly because there's not a really a whole lot to to talk about but i do appreciate you guys hanging around here and coming in to watch the videos and showing your support in the comments i usually read pretty much all of them so i definitely do appreciate learning little things about you guys along the way and i hope you guys have a wonderful uh rest of your day and i will see you guys for an update tomorrow if we see any details change about that storm uh, that's coming to the ohio valley see you later